Hi there, welcome to our Moravian Text Bible Study for Friday the 24th of April and we are in Mark's Gospel chapter 6 verse 14 to 29. Now this passage is a little bit unusual, it is sandwiched between yesterday's reading which is Jesus sending out the twelve in twos to do all the things that he has done and then it follows on tomorrow in the reading with the 12 returning to Jesus to report on all that has taken place but when they return to Jesus they're returning to discover what's gone on in today's passage with Herod and John the Baptist being beheaded and losing his life so it's quite an unusual passage um, we've got Herod Antipas who is the son of Herod the Great He's known as a crazy man. He's a puppet ruler uh, put on uh, into place by the Romans, the whole family being put into place by the Romans. They're not loved or respected by the Jewish people. And Herod hears about all that Jesus is doing and indeed Jesus' disciples, all that they've been doing. And he starts to freak out and he starts to panic because he has just had John the Baptist beheaded and in his paranoia he is led to believe that Jesus is somehow either John the Baptist who has been raised from the dead which is interesting because it means that clearly there's some idea going around Jesus that resurrection will take place that that is in their minds at this time uh, or they think that he's somehow um, Elijah. And on, on one level, just understanding the text, this story sort of serves that first community to clarify that that is not the case at all. This is someone far greater than John the Baptist. You can't just say, oh, it was John the Baptist raised from the dead because John had got a big following at the time. It's sort of a little bit similar to the transfiguration. People were saying, oh, Jesus might be Moses or Elijah. But by seeing him transfigured with Moses and Elijah on the mountain, it clearly proves that he is one who is greater than Moses or Elijah or indeed John the Baptist in this passage. It is a dramatic passage it has got all the elements of a modern blockbuster story hasn't it you've got this uh, paranoid crazy puppet king who is controlled and manipulated by his brother's wife's daughter although he has now married his brother's wife Herodias and the daughter dances for this older king and he is manipulated into having John killed and his head brought on a platter to the dinner party that he is hosting. It's a ghastly picture, isn't it, really? Um, and it's quite hard to do some digging around and get some application um, from the passage. But I just thought it was interesting comparing Herod and this whole story with John the Baptist. Um, John was an interesting character foretold in the Old Testament as a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Um, Jesus said of those born of woman, there was none greater than John the Baptist in Luke chapter 7, 28. Um, he was awaiting the Messiah, so he had a vision for the Messiah. He was a messenger and you can read that in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1, of the fulfilment of Old Testament prophecy. Uh, Jesus calls him great in Matthew 11, verse 11. He had this miraculous birth, if you remember um, Zacharias and Elizabeth, who were well past the age of having children, and angelic visitation, and they have the child. He, he lived as a Nazarite, he took a Nazarite vow. So if you read number 6, you'll see how he didn't have his hair cut and he lived in the wilderness and he never had the fruit of the vine. Um, and he preached repentance and he called people to turn from their sin and to be baptised as a sign of repentance. 
And yet, John the Baptist ended his days in prison, ultimately beheaded by a crazy man and his head put on a platter in a degrading and inhumane way. And I just think it really serves to remind us that actually all that God has called us to, all that God has promised, it doesn't mean we won't suffer in life. It doesn't mean we won't endure hardship. You just think of the suffering church, the church that we are part of, the one church in this world, the universal church, is a persecuted church in many parts of the world, in uh, the 1040 window, in many areas like Nigeria, like Korea. Christians are still suffering for their faith. And so if we have this notion that that stepping into God's will, stepping into God's purpose of serving God will somehow remove any of that suffering or hardship, then we've clearly not read the scriptures and looked at those who've walked this walk before us, people like John the Baptist. So I hope that encourages you today. But I just wanted to remind us that actually we can be fully in the purposes of God and yet still endure hardship, still endure suffering, and yet ultimately we know that God is at work in us and through us to advance his kingdom and to point people to Jesus, for that is what John did.